So this weekend is a major weekend in recruiting for multiple different institutions, but for the Oklahoma Sooners, not only is it a major weekend in terms of recruiting, but it's also going to be incredibly interesting to see what the new staff's style is and their approach to their junior day. And because of that, we've got to talk about it. But before we do, as always, y'all know the drill. I want to hear from you. Hop down to the comments, Y for yes, N for no. Are you excited about Oklahoma's junior day this weekend? And let me know what you're thinking. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Hit that bell notification. I do constant college football content. You don't want to miss any of it. And if you enjoy the content, like and comment down below. Those interactions are truly massive to content creators such as myself and both getting picked up and maintained by the YouTube algorithm. Algorithm. But having said all of that, let's jump right into this because this is a situation I'm going to be watching and I'm going to be very interested in. And it's not just relegated to Oklahoma. In fact, I think the same conversation could be had for a lot of these major institutions that made complete coaching overhauls this offseason. It's just Oklahoma is one of the institutions that did that and their junior day is looking really solid. But specifically, why I'm so intrigued for these new coaching staffs is because the way a lot of these coaching staffs were introduced into their new institutions. Specifically for the Oklahoma Sooners, Brent Venables and company got there and had to hit the ground running. There was no choice. They had to try and salvage the previous year's recruiting class, so the class of 2022, and then on top of that, did phenomenal work in the transfer portal. And so when you think about it like that, and with the work they did in the transfer portal, now they're almost in the exact opposite situation where they've gotten to plan for this. They've gotten to put this together. And this is an event that I think is really going to set the standard for what Brent Venables wants to do as the head coach of the Oklahoma Sooners. And that's why I do believe for Oklahoma, this is so interesting. And like I said, simply not just relegated to Oklahoma. It's just Oklahoma is one of the institutions that will be having a new coaching staff host a major recruiting event. And I'm really interested because when you look at the hires Brent Venables made as head coach of the Oklahoma Sooners, I mean, there are really solid recruiters there. And it makes sense when you see all the big names that are set to be in Norman this weekend. And it's headlined by none other than five-star running back Richard Young, who every major institution in the nation is going to be clamoring to try and get into their recruiting class. Richard Young, the five-star running back, is someone who I think we need to watch carefully because when you look, DeMarco Murray for the Oklahoma Sooners being their running back coach offers a unique perspective because he had success in college and then he carried that success to the NFL. And it is very important that Richard Young is in Norman because another running back that the Oklahoma Sooners thought that they would have in Norman this weekend, Dylan Edwards, is instead taking a surprise visit to Arkansas. Now, Sam Pittman's staff has been really solid on the trail and in the transfer portal so that is an institution we have to keep an eye on but at the end of the day even though you would have loved to get both Edwards and Young in there you can still hold your head extremely high knowing that the number one running back in the nation is still set to be a Norman this weekend and I think that that's a tone setter as far as getting a player of that caliber in I think it's going to be very interesting and I know that Oklahoma fans are going to be excited about that but Richard Young is not the only reason for excitement there are going to be several other their players in attendance making waves at the event and I think two of those names could be offensive linemen Caden Green and Miles McVay. Both individuals are going to be of massive importance not only to the Oklahoma Sooners but to every institution in the nation and if you've watched my content for a while you've probably noticed a theme. Even if you just took a great offensive line class, in my opinion, offensive line is always at the forefront of importance when we're talking about recruiting for a few different reasons. First and foremost is the time it takes for an offensive lineman to translate from the high school game to the college game. It's a position group that some people think has an easy translation, and that couldn't be further from the truth. I mean, you're talking massive steps in advance in the difference in technique required, the difference in speed, the difference and strength, it is a world of difference between how you're playing that position at each of those respective levels, whether we're talking about the high school level, even at some of your best high school
schools in the nation and then at the collegiate level. Now, that's not to say that freshman offensive linemen don't contribute. We've certainly seen freshman offensive linemen contribute, but it's the fact of that's a position group that usually development takes place. And after a year in development, after two years in development, you get this guy now starting and he's doing a really good job. And because of that, I just am under the impression that you can never recruit too many high value offensive linemen. You just simply can't do it. And Caden Green, Miles McVay, very touted offensive lineman. Now let's talk about the defensive side of the football because I have not shied away from the fact that I think the best hire Oklahoma made outside of Brent Venables is Todd Bates, right? And I'm a little bit biased in that. I've said this before. If you're asking me whether I prefer watching offense or defense, my answer is probably going to be defense, even though I love just watching football in general. But defense does get the nod for me. And so because of that, Todd Bates being a guy who played for the Crimson Tide, who's from Alabama, and who I just think is a phenomenal coach and recruiter, I was my favorite hire the Oklahoma Sooners made. In my opinion, that's the best hire they made. And that's not to say that they made any bad hires. I think that they made really solid hires across the board. But Todd Bates is different. And when we're talking about what he's able to do, that's where I think this is going to be a real trendsetter of an event. Because if you're able to come in and make waves with these recruits on event number one, that's only going to build the foundation for the rest of the year. And it's the same thing I talked about when we were talking about Alabama's loaded day this weekend as well yesterday. That there are a lot of prospects coming to Tuscaloosa that I love are coming in this early because you get to build foundations starting now with maybe new pieces of a coaching staff. In Oklahoma's case, you have an entirely new coaching staff for the most part. Some pieces remain. But you get in a guy such as Caden McDonald to continue building a relationship with Todd Bates, who's already regarded as one of the best in the business. You have to love your chances establishing that relationship on this event where Oklahoma is really going to be looking to set the standard for what it is to expect under the Brent Venables era. I think that's a great indication. And Caden McDonald is someone we need to remember. No matter where he goes, keep the name Caden McDonald in your mind because he's coming on off of a monstrous and I do truly mean monstrous junior season in which case he put unreal production up Caden McDonald is someone who I believe we could see rise up the ranks when it's all said and done he is extremely talented and is a name we need to be very aware of so Oklahoma getting in Caden McDonald this weekend is awesome getting to see what Todd Bates is able to do even though we know what Todd Bates is able to do it's just going to be awesome to see and finally the last name we're going to talk about is an edge out of Westlake and Colton Vasque. And we're going to talk about him because a few days ago, I singled out Miguel Chavez as an individual who we haven't really had the opportunity to talk about, but has really hit the ground running in terms of recruiting for the Oklahoma Sooners. Go check out his recruiting profile on 24-7 Sports, and you're going to be very impressed in how, in such a short amount of time, he's been able to make such a tangible difference for the Oklahoma Sooners in terms of recruiting and in terms of getting talent and, and necessary talent. So now when we talk about a situation where this staff gets to have everything in front of them instead of trying to play catch up because of the circumstances they were handed, that's where I'm so intrigued with Oklahoma. Because as I said when we started this video, Brent Venables, Jeff Levy, Todd Bates, Miguel Chavez, they all came into a situation in which they were attempting to play catch up and they succeeded. But now they're in a situation where they have everything in front of them. Everything can be forward planned. And this is a real tone setting event for the Oklahoma Sooners. And because of that, I think it's going to be very interesting to see how it goes. But even more interested than that, I want to know what y'all are thinking. That's it. See ya.